I've been waiting a day or two to make this video, but decided it was time to go ahead and do so. I wanted to kind of compile what Blue Lives Taker actually said and see if it was worth all the defenses it got from some of the older heads and some other people, or if it was worth all the outrage it got from many of the fans out there in wrestling. And of course, the biggest pussies of all that I know, people inside of the wrestling business. Um, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, it was dealing with Taker's appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast where they eventually got to talking about WWE and Taker had some very interesting things to say the least about paying dues and today's locker room and today's product being soft and the internet and wrestling. And you've seen a lot of people either staunchly defend everything Taker says from a standpoint of, oh, you guys are just SJW cucks and soft yourselves and da 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 or you've seen everybody say, this is just angry man using the clothes type of crap. Like, not a lot of context provided either one side or the other, which is pretty typical for our world now. Uh, so, I wanted to kind of actually ignore what other people were saying in terms of how they reacted and focus more on what Taker actually said, look at it, and tell you what I think about it. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. Uh, so as I mentioned, Taker appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast and said a few interesting things that certainly got a lot of people buzzing, a lot of attention on the interwebs of wrestling over the past couple of days. First, Taker, when asked about paying dues, here's what he had to say, and I quote, Everyone has that sense of entitlement and figure they are owed something. They aren't willing to put in the grind. I tell people I was living in my car. Sometimes I could stay with my brother, but a lot of nights I had to sleep in a Monte Carlo. At six foot eight and three hundred fifteen pounds, it really wasn't comfortable. Unquote. Like, if you want to piss at Taker for this take, feel free to. The first sentence that he put in there: "Everyone has that sense of entitlement and figured they are owed something." Yeah, there certainly is an entitlement mindset and mentality that is pervasive, not just through wrestling but society as a whole, whether it's this country or around the world, frankly. You know, we are a very instant gratification-based society. Nobody wants to wait for anything. Nobody wants to put in the work to wait for the payoff. You know, for Christ's sakes, when things even come available on Netflix, instead of waiting and watching like one episode a week or every couple of days, people binge watch now. Like, that's, that's what it is. That's who we are. It's part of what technology has done to us. Uh, so to that part, I think he's absolutely right. Uh, but the rest of it is just dumb. They aren't willing to put in the grind. Yeah, for some of them, I will grant you, Mark, that they appear to not be willing to put in the grind because they're not working on their craft. You don't see them develop. You don't see them improve. You don't see them get better. Uh, but the whole thing about living in your car and that it was uncomfortable and that means that you paid your dues and went through the grind, that's just stupid. I used to sleep in a car. I'd come home some nights and not know whether or not I was going to have anything for dinner. I'd go eating one meal a day like... All that other shit. Been dirt poor several times. All this other crap. But because I did it doesn't mean that I want everybody else to experience it, you a-hole. Other people can pay dues. Other people can put in the effort without having to have that struggle, that suffer. Like, that sucked. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. In no way, shape, or form... Is that something I would view back on with a nostalgic lens or think that other people should have to meet that standard? And the way you're kind of talking here is that kind of old crusty, well, well, back in my day, we walked barefoot in shorts and a tank top in the snow uphill 10 miles to school. That's the way it was. We liked it. Well, your time was stupid. And yes, it is a reason to respect you. The fact that you were willing to sacrifice for your dream, your vision, and you were willing to throw everything into it, but just because others don't do the exact same thing you did and have to deal with the exact same things doesn't mean that they didn't have to suffer, doesn't mean that they didn't sacrifice, doesn't mean that they didn't face serious challenges or consequences. So get fucking bent on this one. This is stupid. Like, if fans want to sit there and talk about this from the paying dues aspect, like, especially you get to the part where it's like, woe is me, look what I used to do. Well, who gives a crap? I'm not impressed. I promise you, I'm not impressed. And nobody else should be either. Entitlement, though? Yeah, oh, certainly there's a sense of entitlement. But that's not epidemic just in WWE or AEW or even wrestling as a whole. That's just the world we live in now. 
Uh, next, take her on today's locker room, which certainly got people talking about the, hey, saying that they're not real men, and oh, God, here we go. And I quote, you go into a dressing room nowadays, and it is a lot different. I remember when I walked into my first real dressing room, and those were some crusty men. Half of them had guns and knives in their bags. Shit got handled back then. Now you walk in there and there are guys playing video games and fucking making sure they look pretty, unquote. Uh, first, Taker likes crusty men. We just found out something new. Congratulations, Taker. I'm sure you've been holding that in for a long time. Number two, the guy that wore guy liner for three decades is talking about other people <laughs> making themselves look pretty in the mirror in the back. Are you serious here? Pot meat kettle, Mark. <laughs> but to the point of his first real dressing room and there were some crusty men in there, half of them had guns and knives and shit got handled. Like to me, where people are focusing on this and say, he's saying that the people that wrestle now aren't real men and da 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 da. I can understand where this kind of comes across kind of, kind of out of touch, kind of comes across crusty old manish. But there's something to it. This is where if Joe Rogan actually really understood professional wrestling and had any salt to him in terms of like a journalist for the wrestling landscape, you would have asked clarification questions to ask him what he meant. And are you talking about the way that people present themselves now versus the way they did back then? Because if you go down that path, that is an incredibly valid comparison. That is an incredibly valid thing to point out. Like those people back then, you know, they looked like professional wrestlers. They looked different. They looked unique. But you knew you didn't want to cross them or fuck with them because if you tried them, they would let you know. They'd help you smell the roses. Whereas now, you see a lot of these guys and you have fans that are tempted to think to themselves, I think I could take that dude. In a lot of cases, they probably wouldn't be able to, but in some, they could. They absolutely could. So there is different. So I get the, I get this kind of notion that he's talking about. The whole thing about playing video games is really dumb and ignorant. I remember my parents' generation sitting there talking about how stupid video games were and how they were a waste of time. Now you got people that go on Twitch and YouTube that make seven, eight figures a year doing what? Streaming video games. Other people watch them play video games. So that whole notion of, well, former or past generations know better and you have to learn from them. You learn as much from their stupidity and their mistakes from their actual knowledge. To my parents, fuck you. You didn't know what the hell you're talking about. And to other people's parents of my generation, sit down and shut the fuck up because you also didn't know what the hell you were talking about. This whole notion of guys playing video games like I don't give a shit what their hobby is. You know, do they all have to do yay? They all have to inject themselves, take sleeping pills and somas and all this other garbage? No. Um... I, maybe I get a little bit of what he's talking about. The vibe is different, and it's hard for him to connect with a culture and generation like that. That that makes sense. Uh, but then you got like Xavier Woods talking about, you know, he's learned a lot from previous generations and uh, something to the effect of, but I also had people tell me it's better to play video games than put other stuff in my body. And it's just kind of like, yeah, but that gets to the whole thing about quality of life. Like, sure, maybe not doing those drugs will help you live longer and you're not going to run the risk of ODing or having heart attacks like a lot of former wrestlers in their 40s and 50s and early 60s. I get that. But then there's also the element of, you idiots nowadays in wrestling do so much reckless, unsafe shit that makes the business look faker than ever, not realer than ever. What the hell do you think's going to happen to you when you're in your 50s and 60s? You'll be alive, but what quality of life will you have? Well, you'll be alive, but will you be living? Look at Matt Hardy. Fucking walks around with a limp all the time. He's only in his 40s. And so the whole thing of, well, it's a healthier lifestyle. Is it? Overall, is it? Do you have the empirical data and evidence that suggests that? No, because the guys now haven't lived long enough for you to fucking know one way or another. The, the, the look pretty one kind of humor me though, because I'm like, guy liner dude talking about, you know, but it's whatever. Uh, then Taker, this is another big one that pissed a lot of people off. Taker on today's product being soft. Then I quote, uh, probably, I'd probably, I'll probably piss a lot of people off, but they need to hear it. 
It is what it is. But to the young guys, oh, he's a bitter old guy. I'm not bitter. I did my time. I'm good. I walked away when I wanted to walk away. I just think the product is a little soft. There are guys here and there that have an edge to them, but there is too much pretty and not enough substance, I think, right now. So this was a lot of fans, again, taking umbrage at the fact of, well, it's not the way they used to do it. So he thinks it's automatically stuff that sucks. That's old man yelling at the codes again. Or that he's sitting there and literally say, questioning these wrestlers' manhoods and that he's calling them not real men, and that the wrestlers of the past were real men, and it's just, shut up. The product is a little soft. And how stupid is that? The guys and gals in wrestling now do more high-impact, more extreme shit than has been done at any point in time in wrestling history, but it is absolutely, positively softer than ever. And if you're a wrestler and this bothers you, the reason it bothers you is because ding dong, dumb dick, it's knocking at your door because it's absolutely true. It is soft. And to his point about there are guys here or there that have an edge to them, look at Roman Reigns. Like you believe Roman Reigns is intense, even though you know how he is like outside of the ring, outside of the WWE world, nice guy, all of that. But here's a guy that when he's on camera, he makes you believe, or at least suspend your disbelief. You think and believe that he wants to murder somebody. And every week, he wants to kill Jey Uso. There is nothing soft about that presentation. He comes across like, to use the cliche, a real man, but he looks like an MFer. He acts like the MFer. He talks like the MFer. He's a badass. So you don't look at him and think the product's soft. But if you look at somebody like <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler, everything about him from the middle school girl hair twisties to the freaking prancing around to the freaking flipping flopping fucking in his matches, like that looks soft. And it's an epidemic throughout professional wrestling. These guys and gals do more extreme shit that looks more choreographed and fake that the people don't buy into, that they don't believe in, that they don't get emotionally invested in, so they have to kill themselves even more just to get a cheap pop because they don't know how to do things in a meaningful way. He's absolutely right. The product is soft. I couldn't imagine looking at this product for any of these companies today and thinking it doesn't look soft. There's not enough substance. And I think that this is, again, an example where he did himself a disservice in terms of the wording. If he said, guys are doing too much crap, that in theory they think looks good, but actually looks really bad, that lacks a lot of substance. We're missing guys that can tell stories. We're missing guys that could be characters and personalities that could talk, that could be unique. Like at that point in time, you have nothing to say. You're like, damn, Taker's absolutely right. This is more of an example to me. I get kind of what he was inferring, or maybe I'm just drawing a conclusion, jumping to a conclusion, that's what he's inferring. Um, but it's just, to me, it comes across, I understand totally what he was getting at, and you guys can let me know whether you agree or not. He just worded it very poorly and he didn't get the proper follow-up from the person interviewing him, in this case, Joe Rogan, to really kind of clarify what he was referencing. But if you think this is questioning people's manhoods, like, how, do, how does anybody succeed in their lives? Especially the wrestlers. Like, this bothers you that much? I saw what Drew McIntyre was talking about. Oh, we do more physical shit than ever. Hey, Drew... Number two, you do more fake looking shit than ever. And not necessarily just talking about you specifically or even at all. Just in general. The whole notion of physical stuff to toughness or softness, like the ratio is all broken. More extreme shit than ever looks faker and weaker than ever. You don't buy into that crap. You don't believe into a lot of that crap. And you can sit there and get all emotional and butthurt about it, but the reality is, if it's knocking on your door, then it's probably true. You know, so, yeah, the product is soft today. I couldn't imagine being a clown thinking that it wasn't. And then the last one was Taker on the Internet and wrestling. He says in that quote, You also have too many people on the Internet. So far, so true. Well, these guys on the Internet say, I'm pretty effing good. 
It's like you can listen to them or you can listen to somebody who has been there and done it. So I think there was just not enough merging of the young and the new talent. Like when we had Stone Cold, The Rock, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, all these guys, we were all working together and we were making money and we were drawing. Then we all just kind of aged out. I hung in there for a long time, but we kind of aged out. And then it just left all these young guys to learn with more young guys and the product changed. The PC, the Performance Center, the Training Center is helping. We've got Triple H, a great wrestler. He has that whole thing and he's trying to get some of the toothpaste back in the tube. He's trying to move it back to kind of take a step back to move forward to give the product a little more edge, unquote. Now, of all the things that Taker said that I've seen out of this interview, this whole blurb is freaking stupid. This makes no sense. This to me, if you want to talk about old man disconnected from reality, here's a perfect example of it. He's not even speaking to the reality of what's going on with the internet when you talk about professional wrestling. And even before I get to that, let me be clear here. Triple H is doing what? God's doing what? Putting the toothpaste back in the tube? The fuck are you talking about, man? He's feeding into the garbage just like everybody else. He's the one presenting a product that's all about spots and all about the flippy crap that isn't about characters, personalities, or storytelling. So what in the hell are you even talking about here, Mark? And then the whole thing, you have too many people on the internet. These guys on the internet saying pretty effing good. It's like you can listen to them or... No, that's not even like the biggest problem with the rest, wrestling world when it comes to the internet. Taker, what the hell are you even talking about? You have no clue. The biggest problem is that these guys surround themselves with a cocoon of insecurity where they have to only engage and involve themselves with people that tell them how good they are and how awesome they are because they can't handle criticism coming from outside of anywhere else. Like the reality is in life, you should be your own toughest critic, always. If anybody's a harsher critic on you than you are of yourself, the problem is not them, the problem is you. And say this, like, have you been on the wrestling internet much? Probably not, but in the past decade, you really shouldn't talk if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The problem, if anything, is that you've got wrestlers that are more concerned about their fucking feelings getting hurt by what people post on social media and reacting to that. Or anytime anybody gives them criticism, whether it's out of bounds or whether it's totally in bounds, they sit there and lash out and they get mad and they get pissy and they get their followers to rally behind them like this insecure cocoon of cuckdom, the likes of which I don't know if I've ever seen. No. You got wrestlers, instead of focusing on being better at their craft, instead of focusing on crap that really matters, they're sitting there blocking people because they say something they don't like. Like these are the people. And this is Vets too. Like one of the biggest social media pussies of all time is JBL. Oh, but he's from that era. That tough guy era. Yeah, except he was a puss. And you get shit rocked by Joey Styles. Arrest my case. You can be a big bully. Doesn't mean you're a big tough guy. No, the problem with the internet is that these talents now in wrestling don't know how to either A, compartmentalize and ignore the bullshit, B, stay away from vanity searching themselves in the fucking, in their mentions and then going after people, C, looking to the internet to try and fill the gap and fill the void that comes out of their own personal insecurities with who they are and what they do. That's the problem with the internet. Your point about, you know, guys kind of aged out and went away and they didn't really have like that natural transition. In a lot of ways, you're correct. I would say he's absolutely correct. Uh, but the whole notion that Triple H is fixing anything, dude, you're clueless. The whole thing that uh, it's just that the internet, they're surrounding themselves with people saying I'm good so I don't have to listen to anybody else. No, they just don't want to listen to anybody else because they're too insecure. It is, again, a reflection of society as a whole. Take her. Like, if I sat there and told you how ignorant it is to rock your Blue Lives Matter shirt, like, you would get all pissy and butthurt about it. You would. Like, talk to people that sit there and rock those stupid-ass Blue Lives Matter shirts and see if they don't overwhelmingly act like fucking snowflakes. 
And Taker's just another one of them, period. So, to this whole notion of people saying, well, he, he just sounds like an old, crusty man, I think it's a combination of things. I think some of this is totally valid to call him out on because it's stupid. It makes no sense, like I just have. I think some of it is poorly worded. And if he had worded it better, it would have gotten the point across better to the point where it wouldn't have been very deniable. Like the example that I gave about the product is soft now. Yes, people are doing more extreme, high-impact shit than ever, but it looks faker than ever and people don't take it seriously. But when somebody like Roman Reigns does it, for example, people buy into it. They believe it. Nobody would sit there and say he's soft. Or when Brock Lesnar's doing it, nobody would sit there and say that he's soft. You know, it's about believability. Like if I explain it in that way, it makes sense. I just think in some cases, some of these answers were poorly worded. The whole thing about um, video games is dumb. Guys having guns and knives in the back. Yeah, like, there is something to the fact that you used to have badasses in wrestling and you don't feel like you have much, a bunch of badasses in wrestling anymore. I agree with that. Like, I don't see how you can agree with that. The world changes and it's different. That doesn't automatically make a lot of the men in wrestling today pussies. It's for some of them, it's other things that clearly indicate that they are insecure pussies. But it doesn't mean that it has to be like that. You can just say the locker room is different. Like they're playing video games now. I never did that back in my day. It just is what it is. Maybe he just said that. It's okay. You know, again, the guy liner guy talking about others in the back trying to make themselves look pretty. I mean, get real. Um, the stuff about paying the dues. Like how do you define what paying dues is for somebody? You know what I mean? Like 30 plus years ago. Yeah, it was probably more common when you're paying your dues to do that type of shit. It's, it's all relative, though. Today, it might not look like that, but you're not making that much money either. Like, it's just different. So, it's just ignorant. Um, I'm surprised you would want it to be like the old times where guys starved and struggled for years and had to take drugs for an escape. Like, what the hell are we doing here? Uh, and then some of this stuff, he was absolutely right. And for those of you that get all upset about it, Maybe you're really upset about it because it hits too close to home and it's too close to reality and it's true and you fucking know it is. And I'm not even necessarily talking about the fans. Like, fans are stupid. Fans are going to sit there and rant and rave and everything like that anyways. Fans as a whole, we're pretty stupid. But not nearly as stupid as wrestlers. And not nearly as insecure or soft as wrestlers are. Because you know a lot of them are. And instead of taking what Taker said and getting worked up about what he said, maybe determine, hey, this I don't agree with. This is dumb. But this, he's onto something. This, he makes a good point. And taking that and utilizing that as a gift, it's like in the working world. You should look at any and all feedback that you receive as a gift, positive and negative. It doesn't mean you agree with all of it. Does it mean you like all of it? Does it even make all of it valid necessarily or make it true or make it that you want to incorporate all of it? But every opportunity, every chance you have to receive feedback is a damn gift. And leave it to the insecure people surrounding professional wrestling and more so the insecure people within professional wrestling today to get all butthurt and bent out of shape about it. And as far as The Undertaker goes, you know, maybe next time, learn how to better illustrate and eloquate your point. And it would avoid some of this swirlage. And some of that stuff about, well, back in my day, nobody gives a shit about back in your day anymore. Grow up and move the hell on. And imagine thinking that because people don't sleep in their cars, they don't pay dues. I would never. There are people that didn't sleep in cars but struggled every bit as I did, if not more so, throughout their lives. It just was different. And then maybe next time, before you talk about wrestling in the internet, like actually make sure you know what the hell you're talking about when it comes to wrestling in the internet. Because everything you describe was mostly wrong and way wrong. But I guess some of you are going to cancel Taker now. You want to cancel for the Blue Lives Matter stuff, you go right ahead, feel empowered to do so. Because that's fucking ignorant. But for something like this, though, God, he should have just came out and said today that the wrestling business in WWE today is full of pussies. And you would have been absolutely right on the mark with that. <laughs>